All right. So the last part of our lecture today is going to be what's in chapter 10, and that's about projectiles. And I'm going to bridge this in with what I was just asking about with things that are orbiting in space and seem to be lacking any kind of gravitational force. So I want to look at the surface of the Earth, and I want to make a cannon that shoots a cannonball. And I'm going to shoot that cannonball out. And we've discussed this last semester, how the cannonball, if you shoot it out, is going to have a little curved path to it, right? A little curved trajectory, projectile path. If we shoot that cannon out with more velocity, it's going to go a little bit further. And if we shoot it out with an even higher velocity, it's going to go a little further. And let's just pretend we don't have to worry about air resistance or any kind of frictional actions on the cannonball. And let's just say we shoot it a little bit further and a little bit further. And all of a sudden, we start to see that the path that it takes matches the curvature of the Earth. So that is what an object that's in orbit around a planet is doing. An object that's in orbit has traveled, I'm going to try to draw this and not mess up my picture. For every eight kilometers that you travel horizontally, <clears throat> you drop down, I'm just making sure I got my number right, you drop down five meters vertically. That's the natural curvature of the Earth. So if you can shoot something with a high enough velocity that it can travel that far horizontally, it's going to fall in such a way that it never actually strikes the surface of the Earth. So this next to last path was just a little shy of that, but I reached the magic number in that last path so that it, as it fell, it fell at the exact rate of the, that the Earth was falling away from it. And if you zoomed out and you looked at the entire Earth, you would notice that that object was traveling in a path, that circular path that it was traveling on matched the curvature of the Earth. Does that mean that that object is not experiencing gravity? No, it doesn't mean that at all. In fact, any object that's orbiting in space, whether it's a telescope or a moon or a space station, is definitely experiencing a gravitational force. And that gravitational force that's acting to the center of that object that it's orbiting is the centripetal force. <laughs> and that object has a tangential velocity that's going in a tangent to its orbit. I didn't quite draw that straight, but I'll try again. There we go. That's my tangential velocity. But the combination of that gravitational force and that horizontal or tangential velocity, it's not really horizontal when it's in space, <laughs> will create this curved path. And that curved path is the orbit of the object, which happens to be the same as any projectile that you might throw on the surface of Earth. It's just that on the surface of Earth, when we're standing here, we don't throw things with enough speed that it actually matches the curvature of the Earth because we're not the Roadrunner or Wile E. Coyote or some other cartoon character. Now, why does that make it look like the astronauts are floating in their space station and having a great time? Are they lacking weight? Are they really weightless? What does weightless mean? <clears throat> to be weightless doesn't mean that you don't have weight because gravity is still acting on you no matter where you are in the universe. It just means that you are lacking a normal force. or a support force, for those of you not with me in the fall. So the people that are in space orbiting around, or you if you're doing some crazy amusement park ride here on the surface of the earth that's like dropping you towards the ground, are in a weightless state because you lack a normal force or a support force from whatever you're in. If you're in an elevator and the elevator cable breaks and you fall with the elevator, there's no way you can stand on the ground of the elevator anymore because you and the elevator are both falling at the same rate. So you are weightless. Even though it's your weight that's pulling you downward towards the ground, we call that a weightless state of being because 
There's no normal force or support force. You can't stand on the ground. You can't jump up from the bottom of the elevator when you're falling because you can't jump off anything because you're falling. So <clears throat> that's what's going on with objects in orbit around the Earth. I'm going to talk about one more projectile thing. And then there's a lot of great topics in chapters 9 and 10 that I just don't have time to get to. The tides are one of them, and I have that conceptual physics page for you to do with the tides. Um, there's another cool topic about if you were to dig a hole through the entire earth and jump into the hole, what would happen to you as you fell through the earth? Would you speed up and shoot out the other side? Would you get stuck right in the middle? Would you go to the other side and then get pulled back up through the hole towards where you started and then just keep bouncing back and forth endlessly? That's a wonderful question, and if you really want to dive into that, there's a nice section in chapter 10, 9, chapter 9, about that. So please read about it because it's fun to read about. I just don't have time to lecture on it or test you on it. So I'm going to do the last little projectile thing, and that is going to be it for me. So let's say that we've got two objects. I've got one, and I can't do this. I was going to do it in class, but I can't do it here on the video. I have this uh, red ball and I have a black ball. And one of them, the red one, I'm going to shoot off with some horizontal velocity. And it's going to land over here and follow that nice curved projectile path. The black ball is just going to roll right off the table and fall straight down here. So it's not going to have the same horizontal velocity as this ball. And I want to talk about how they're going to hit the ground. Are they going to hit the ground at the same time? Is the one that's dropped going to hit the ground first? Do you have any ideas? Do you know the answer to this question? So here's the question I'm going to ask you. If I had a gun and I shot the gun and the bullet came out of the, knob, the opening of the barrel and at the same time the bullet shot bullet left the barrel, a bullet was dropped. It was like a little device on the end so that a mechanism would drop a bullet as the bullet was shot. If I hold the gun horizontally, bam! Shot bullet goes out, obviously lands really far away. Dropped bullet drops straight down. Are they going to land at the same time? Shot bullet, drop bullet, or are they going to be different? What if I hold the gun up in the air and I go bam and shoot the gun up? Shot bullet's going to fly up and then come down. Dropped bullet's going to get dropped. Which one's going to hit the ground first? the dropped bullet will hit the ground first if I'm aiming the gun up in the air. Now I'm going to aim the gun down at the ground. Kablam! Which bullet's going to hit the ground first? The shot bullet or the dropped bullet? If I'm aiming towards the ground, the shot bullet's got to hit first. So if I aim the gun up in the air and the dropped bullet hits first, and I aim the gun towards the ground and the shot bullet hits first, there's got to be a magical spot where they hit at the same time. And it's the horizontal position. If I'm holding the gun horizontally and I shoot, it doesn't matter that the shot bullet lands really far away. They would technically land at the same time. Now, of course, we're suspending air resistance for this demonstration. The point is that gravity doesn't care how fast that velocity is. It's still going to pull that ball down the same amount each second. So if I was to draw this black ball at second one, it would be right there. And if I was to draw it over here, it would be here. Now the velocity in the x direction pulled it over to this position, but they both fell the exact same distance downward in that first second. <clears throat> if I was to draw them right before, like one second after that, they might be here and here. So it, at each second that they fall, they're falling the same vertical distance. They are just have a different horizontal velocity. So the thing you need to understand about projectiles is that gravity does not care how fast something is moving.
So it's going to act the same on any object regardless of how fast it's moving, whether it's a shot bullet, whether it's something you're dropping, whether it's two marbles. You can try this at home off the edge of the table. You can try to flick a marble and let one roll off. It's kind of hard to do, but you can try to do that at the same time and see if you can do a slow-mo video or something and get that to work out so you can see them both landing at the same time. So projectile motion is just how, just understanding that gravity is going to pull things down the same as if they were just dropped and it's the end, there's an independence between the horizontal motion of the object and the vertical motion of the object. And this is why things can orbit the Earth because it doesn't matter how fast it's going. A space station is traveling 15,000 miles per hour. It doesn't really matter. It's still going to be falling towards the Earth at the same rate. It's just that it's going so fast that its fall is matching the curvature of the Earth. And it just wraps around the other side. I think that's it. If there's anything I forgot, I'll add to the video. But otherwise, you guys should look forward to finishing up your homework for chapters 9 and 10. Be sure you get the conceptual physics page that I ask you to turn in. Send those pictures to me and look for the test coming up. I will send you a link to that probably early next week. All right. Bye.